Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back to another episode of Celebrating Act 2. My partner John Coleman and I have the pleasure, always the pleasure, of uh, one of our speaking with one of our favorite buddies, Manny Pacheco of Forgotten Hollywood fame. Hi, Manny. Well, thank Manny, you. great to see you. Good to see you guys, too. I, I consider myself more of a pal than a buddy, but that's good. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I withdraw a buddy. To yeah, there's a music to, in there somewhere. We get to pal speak Manny. with our pal, Manny Pacheco. <laughs> Hi, Manny. Hey, Manny. Um, I just saw West Side Story, Steven Spielberg's mm. West Side Story. And I was one of those people who, before I saw it, said, why? Why? I loved the original. I loved the, the music. I loved the style. I know it was came from a Broadway play, but why do we really need a remake? And then I saw it, and I'm now a believer. They, Spielberg primarily, but his mm -hmm. team, did a fabulous job of making it relevant to the current years. Right. And, and updating it. Right. And yet keeping us keeping the essence of it and not losing any of the wonderful romance to it. Right. Um they they did something very smart, I thought. In updating it, they didn't make it a modern story. If you remember the old movie, The Four Feathers, do you remember mm -hmm. The Four Feathers? Sure. One of my favorite all-time movies. It was remade um, not that many years ago. It was remade uh, with, of all people, Heath Ledger in the role. And they what they did is they kept it in the period of uh, whatever that was, the Boer War or something like that, 1870. But they updated the morality of it and lost the whole issue, the whole meaning behind courage and bravery. And, uh, and I just felt so bad for that movie and that was one of the movies that made me say look you don't need to remake these movies you know so what if the original was in black and white i don't care it was a great movie but spielberg took um west side story and rooted it even more deeply into 1958 and i have to say i'm a believer now um i'm, I'm trying i was trying to think of other movies that have been remade and and i'll call it updated for the sake of argument um are there many of them is that uh, hollywood does like to do that though don't they uh, hollywood loves doing that because they did they 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 believe that if it sells the first time it'll sell the second third or even fourth time in in, in the case of a star is born or little women oh, uh, good, good, <laughs> good examples yeah but in terms of west side story i agree they fleshed out the characters and they were more accurate you know, I've I've been now. This is going to be real controversial. I'm I'm of the belief that the 1961 movie is a flawed classic. I think it's a classic, but I think it had a lot of flaws. The uh, you know the fact that Natalie Wood didn't sing, Richard Beamer was horribly miscast, George Shakiris wasn't even Puerto Rican. I mean, there was a lot of problems with it. The, the, the choreography was pristine, and the music remains pristine. And Steel, Steven Spielberg pretty much corrected all of those problems um i i like this one just about as much as i like the first one so to me they're they're fairly equal so i'm of the camp that yeah you know remaking a classic is fine if you can do something that's going to add to the flavor and yes to answer your question john there have been others just this year nightmare alley is a great example of taking a classic 1947 noir with tyrone power and joan blondell Yes. And bringing in a cast, and of course, the exact perfect director, Guillermo del Toro, uh, to, to, to add such neo-noir qualities. I, I mean, I, only one other movie comes to mind, is, 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 which I think is as good a, a neo-noir film, and that's Chinatown. Not a remake, but, but a neo-noir film. Yes. And Nightmare yeah. Alley is a great update because it's in color versus black and white, but loses none of the texture and none of the flavor and still keeps elements of, 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 um, of, of um, verbiage, calling the, the, the pathetic creature the geek, for example. Yeah. And, and really did a wonderful job 
And I think it's a worthy, um, not only is this a worthy remake, but I think for those folks who really have not, are not part of the Turner Classic Movies crowd, will go and search for the Tyrone Power movie and they will uh, go to see it. Your argument, John, has to do with why do they remake films that we deem perfect? Yeah. And that argument comes up every single time something like A Star is Born is created. Now, the, the most celebrated example was the talk about remaking Ben-Hur recently. But quite frankly, Ben-Hur was a remake in 1959. It was a remake of the silent Ben-Hur. Right. You're right. You're Same right. thing with Cleopatra. It, it, it had been done in 1963 when Elizabeth Taylor did Cleopatra. That was the third time it had been done. Yeah. So, I mean, really? Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay to do a remake. It's it's, it's not a problem. Well, I, th I think one of the, so, one of the well, problems is, that depending upon how long ago the original was, like The Hunchback of Notre Dame or, uh, or Grapes of Wrath, is that the, those all today we see as having been done on sound stages or having been pretty much not done in the real world. But with uh, computer graphics the way they are today and animation yeah. and the ability to go and shoot on location as they never could before, uh, right. that, that's probably a reason to think about coming out with a new one. But unless you have somebody with the vision and the skills of uh, Spielberg, uh, you could just modernize it and screw it up because you don't, you're, you're not Spielberg. And so I think it's... You mean it, like it's as much Spielberg as anybody else. You mean like King Kong? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know that they could ever make a, a King Kong that's better than the original. Mm -hmm. And they keep yeah. trying. I mean, they actually keep trying. But are they yep. ever going to make one that was as good with with less technology? Was it was as good as mm -hmm. the nineteen thirty three right. version? I I don't think so. I I think it, it it's about as perfect as it gets. Now sometimes they'll take a movie. And they'll add music to the, to it as they did with Pygmalion and then My Fair Lady. And so technically the dialogue is exactly the same, only they add music. So they've added an hour's worth of, of footage, you know, yeah. cell, celluloid. Uh, and another great example of that was uh, a, a Song is Born was the remake uh, to uh, um, um, Ball of Fire, which was a Danny Kay update to, um, to the uh, Barbara Stanwyck and Gary Cooper film. So yeah, I mean, it's pretty wild that they would remake a film just five or six years later. Um, but, you know, that argument's been had also with people, who, and, and we're not going to have this argument, but it just as a, a comparative argument, why, why people uh, do remakes of songs, you know, like, like Light My Fire in 1968, Seven by The Doors and 68 by Jose Feliciano. So, I mean, movies will come out every decade, maybe every 20 years. They like to say every generation to draw excitement to a well-told story. Yeah. And I think the best example of that, uh, w which caused controversy in, in the end, it, it shouldn't have been controversial at all, was, of course, Cecil B. DeMille's update of The Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments was great as a silent film. But boy, you add Charlton Heston and Yul Brenner and you part the Red Sea the way he was able to do in 1956. Yeah. You got yourself a really good movie. <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean, am I wrong yeah. on that? Yeah, and it and that begs the question. It's really a, a an individual evaluation each time with each new version, whether it was not necessary, but whether it's better. Mm. Quite frankly, you know, if it's if it's not much different, then it wasn't necessary. Right, and you know, there was another remake this year. We I forgot to mention. How about the tragedy of Macbeth? Th that yes. basically is a remake of the uh, the classic that was uh, created on stage by Orson Welles, an all-black yep. cast. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and the Coen brothers def definitely uh, bring in Denzel Washington, who is so good at Shakespeare. I mean, just absolutely oh, yeah. fabulous. And, and give, give him Frances McDormand as his wife, who seems to, in every film, embody whatever it is that she's asked to, to, to as, as she's assigned mm -hmm. and whatever task at hand. Yeah. She... She doesn't fail, and she just doesn't fail. So Macbeth is also a remake. In you know, I, and I those, forgot and about those controversy. two. Not one bit of controversy. So, yeah, yeah. so that, that's 
those are three remakes this year. I didn't even think about yeah. it that way. Well, there is even a fourth. Yeah. <laughs> How about Cyrano? Yeah. Of course, <laughs> Peter Dinklage. I yeah. love and I love Cyrano. You're yeah, right. That's a, Jose Ferrer won an Academy Award for playing Cyrano. Yeah, and you're right. Uh, Cyrano, West Side Story, and uh, they all started as stage plays. Macbeth, that's right. Mm. Yeah. So yes, there, there's four in this y year, yet West Side Story is the one that gets, you know, eviscerated. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Why? And as, and as well, you said, it, it was really, really, really good. It's a don't yeah. miss. It, well, it was the biggest movie of them all, hmm. you know. Uh, yeah, as far as uh, ticket sales, it's not. But, yeah. <laughs> but, that's, but I think, I think it's, that's it's, the it's, pandemic and a lot of other things. Yeah, I think it's the best of the four, though. Yeah, yeah, so. Well, this has been a lot of fun. Yeah, and we took a controversy and we kind of softened it around the edges. Yes. I kind of like that. <laughs> a little bit of softball. A little softball. Yeah. I think a soft touch is what's needed. You know, you know what I tell you know, this is what I tell the critics. Relax. Take a chill pill. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Thank you, Manny. Amen. See you soon, Manny. You bet. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.